Hi, Edward. Welcome to Premier Gospel and to the Latin Selection. How are you doing today? I am doing great. I am enjoying this sunny California day. <laughs> oh, so jealous. Although we do have really hot weather here at the moment. So it's like 7 p.m. here, but it's still like mid 20 degrees Celsius. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. So, yeah. So we're still, <laughs> we've still got a little bit of summer left. Um, so could you start by telling us about A Many Men? Um, you say it's your story and um, could you just introduce yourself to us? Who is Edward Rivera and um, what would you like us to know about you as a solo artist? Yeah, so hi, my name is Edward Rivera. I have been <clears throat> uh, doing ministry for 11 years now um, and this is my first uh, solo album, uh, which I'm really excited about. Um, Amen and Men is my story. It's the, the title track um, of the album. And uh, I feel like it was perfect because it ca really captures the heart of the full album. It's my testimony. It's it's my song. It's it's me sharing what God did in my life and, and declaring um, what he can do for others as well. Um, I've been, like I said, I've been doing ministry for 11 years. I started off as a background singer. I started traveling with a lot of different artists. And then eventually uh, started writing and uh, started traveling and writing for other artists and working as like a vocal producer. Um, and I was really comfortable enjoying doing, uh, not having a lot of responsibility, just going in, singing my part and then going home. It was honestly really great. I was very happy. And then uh, the Lord showed me that all these years of traveling with these different artists and different people was all years of preparation for this moment for Amen and Men. So I'm, I said yes and um, recorded my own record and and put it out there. So this is this is my heart um, in melodic form. If you could if you could say anything, I love that. I think that's a good way of describing it. Um, so, like you mentioned, you write a lot of songs um, and you wrote all the songs on this album. Co-wrote, I think, quite a lot. Um, could you just tell us a little bit about what that process was like? And um, you also have some amazing collaborations with Arab Moses, Naomi Rain from Maverick. So um, yes. could you just tell us about how they got involved um, with the project? Yeah, so um, Maverick City started here in my town, um, Redding, California. They started here at Bethel Church and um, it, it, they kind of just got together and we were writing and then they were just recording and then it, it turned it, it became a thing in Atlanta. So I was going to these camps and I got, and that's when I met Aaron, Naomi, we were writing together and all this stuff. So we became friends and we just continued to work together. And when I came down to record my project, I was like, you guys have to be in my project. And we finished, uh, we finished the record. Me and Aaron have written a lot of songs together. Um, but the writing process is great. Everybody has their own style. Everybody writes differently. Some people have um, uh, melodies first Some people have lyrics first. Um, I love co-writing. I feel like I'm better at co-writing because I could really, um, I really thrive off of the opinions of others. If I present something, they're like, oh, we could change this or, or whatever. And then I'm like, let's go for it, you know? Um, so it, it, the process looked different for every song, specifically for Amen, Amen, for that track. Um, it was a poem. It started off as a poem. Um, I really wanted to like expand my vocabulary in uh, Spanish because it's my second language. And uh, I started reading poetry. So I got inspired and just writing like po poems and stuff. And this was one of the ones that I showed Aaron and he was just like, we need to, we need to turn this into a song. So we finished it and it turned out to be great. Um, the song itself, when we record, it's a live recording. So when we recorded it, it was supposed to be like three minutes, but it ended up being like 45. Cause, cause like there was just so much happening. Like this, the spirit was moving and, we were flowing and I mean, me and Aaron are flowers already. So we, I think we, we sang so many songs right after that and we didn't want to take away. We wanted to share that moment with everybody, with the listeners. So we kept it in there. So it's, it's divided into moments, moment one, moment two and moment three, but yeah, it, it's been, it was a great experience to write all that stuff. So um, like you just mentioned, it was a live album recording. Um, yes. Was that intentional? Because for me personally, as I listened to the album, something that was very present was God's presence and you could feel the weight and the anointing of the music in the album. It's a really, it's almost like an experience, I'd say, almost like a, an art, like you, you move through the experience and you, I don't know, it's almost just like an ushering into God's presence. So was it intentional yes. to do that live? Absolutely, because I felt like 
if this was going to be my first album, I wanted to share like what if I were going to go lead somewhere at a church or an, or at an event, I wanted the people who are going to who are going to invite me to know what they're getting themselves into. <laughs> so I was like, if I'm going to introduce myself as an artist, I'd rather do it the way I I do it every day, every Sunday at church or every time I lead somewhere. I want them to have a full live experience um, because that's literally where I where I thrive more because I could I could go off of what I'm feeling in the moment. Um, you can't really do that in a studio recording. Um, not that I'm against it. I will definitely do one. But yeah, for this record, I just felt like since it's my first one, it has to be live. Sorry, I just need to myself because my dog's barking and I'm like, I don't need this in the oh, room. You're okay. You're okay. Um, so something else I wanted to talk about was worship. And one of the songs is called Clean Hands, Pure Heart. And I really, really like that song. It is, um, it almost put words into something that I've been going through in the season of my life and just, God, check my heart, check my motive um it's all about you it's not really about me you know that scripture he becomes more and more I must become less and less that type yeah. of thing um and I think a lot of people are feeling that shift in the capital c church of like clearing out the agendas of man and really coming back into the basics of worship and praising God and making mm -hmm. it about God so um as maybe like the body of Christ um could you just speak to that perspective and why worship is important. Absolutely. I think that um, it's evident in in all like the worship movements that are happening around the world. I think that um, there was a time where there was a level of excellence that, that's definitely still there, but there was it was mostly it was really emphasized by the music and the style of music, the the chords, the the sound. Uh, now it's uh, I mean you see it even with Mav where it's literally they just push record and whatever happens happens because what really matters at the end of the day is the presence so and I, and that style has kind of like carried on to everywhere it's it's something that um you can see at with a, a Bethel album or a or a Elevation album a House Fires album I mean it's all around and even in the Latin world that sound is definitely carried through because I think we are making it now where where people are hungry for presence I think after 2020 for sure there was like a hunger for that of like all right we don't have our typical Sunday churches so we need to have presence in our home um so this was a great way to 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 do that and I think I think that it's uh it's a global thing that's happening right now um where where we're really running after presence, we're really running after the Lord, um, and you don't really need much. You don't really need the best producers. You don't really need the best musicians. It's just if you like the Bible says, where the two or three are gathered. You know what I mean? Like that's really what matters. So I don't use this word loosely, but the word revival is something that is you know coming up a lot um so do you think that that is also part of it do you think like revival is hitting like the churches is hitting people is just like small groups all of that yeah I believe so like an awakening mm. uh an awakening for for something else it's like we've done church a certain way for so long now it was time after, like I said, after 2020, it was time to see it in the streets. Like it forced us, the, the church walls were, were closed, the church doors were closed. So now it forced us to bring this out into the world. So there's definitely an awakening for something more for, uh, for, for revival. And something else that you shared on Instagram um, was this really lovely video with your pastor, Samuel Rodriguez. Um, yes. And he covered the album and prayed with you. And he spoke about you leading and in a prophetic way and likened you to equipping a generation um, and that your calling is almost like a rocket launch, which is very powerful, very profound. Um, so if you had advice for the next generation, maybe like Gen Z, young millennials, um, what would you tell them about worship and um, the importance of seeking God's presence and coming with no agenda, but other than a heart to serve? 
uh, it's all about a heart posture. Like, I think even as an artist myself and, and even conversations I've had with other artists, it's something that we have to continue to to remind ourselves because it's so we, it's so easy to get distracted. Whenever we're put on an album, of course we want it to be great, but at the end of the day, we have to remember that this isn't this was out of obedience. This was because we felt the Lord saying, "Do this," and we're we're doing it. And whether people receive it or not, at the end of the day, we did our job. Um, so I think the goal in worship is not fame. The goal in worship is not. Uh, likes or followers the goal in worship is him it's his presence so that's that's mainly my my thing and, and he's spoken to something that was very very true I it's something that I'm very passionate about I have this uh, event that I do once a year called found and it comes from that scripture says uh that the Lord is searching for those who are worshiping in spirit and in truth and I want to be one of the ones that he finds you know what I mean so and it, it's literally where we we just we do workshops specifically on just worship and really get the hearts back onto what it ma- what really matters. Because I think a lot of people will come to these types of events and be like to get like a formula of like, okay, how can I get to where you are or to what you're doing? And we're like, that's not what we're here for. We're actually here to show you what really matters. And it's really your heart posture in the, and b- before the Lord. I love that because um, I think, you can't really duplicate what God's doing in some someone's life because no. it's about a willingness to say, God, here I am, use me. And then what God yeah. wants to do is what God wants to do. It's really that simple, isn't it? Um, so like you mentioned earlier, you've worked with some really incredible artists um, and you've shaped a lot of modern day worship music. Um, you've got credits with Maverick, Bethel, Christine DeClario, so many people. Um, and you shared this, I'm going to read this caption that you put on Instagram, just for, okay. this, um, just for more context. So you posted about your first album before it was released and you said, my very first album, this has been years in the making, years of serving other influential ministries as a background vocalist personal personally assisting them while building relationships along the way sitting in writing sessions with top composers musicians and producers like a fly on the wall observing and taking notes years of partnering with different artists by vocal producing writing and even featuring on albums that have shaped the direction of worship today all of these years of hard work have led me to this i finally have my own voice i finally have something to say i've been waiting to share these songs with the world and leave my own print on the earth a many men is my story and I'm honored to share it with you all so you you said earlier about a season of preparation when I read that I was like this was a season of preparation so um what was that season of preparation like for you um and what did you learn in that time and how did it prepare you for the moment that you're in now man it taught me to be faithful to uh to the cause like to 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 my purpose um I learned so much man I could I could literally talk on this forever (laughs) Um, (laughs) I uh I learned how to serve I learned how to what it looks like to serve um I learned how to be a son I learned the importance of being planted in a church um and not trying to do things on my own and without covering I learned the importance of covering that was a big one Mm -hmm. um I definitely saw how important it is to have a covering, to have um, a a church or or people or pastors over you who are constantly checking in, who are like seeing what you're doing, who who aren't really impressed by anything that you do or anything that you accomplish, but more so concerned about my heart. Um, so I I learned about all that stuff. Um, I learned how to be a good steward. Of, of what I'm carrying right now, of what of this album, what it takes to um, put an album out there, not just to put it out there, but how to be a good steward of it by um, by sharing these songs with other other churches, with other people. Um, I also learned how to manage the the business side of stuff. You know what I mean? Like, and I and I learned just by watching um, some some artists for sure were definitely like bringing me along and teaching me. Um, but for sure, there was some other ones that I just watched. I just watched them, how they did relationships, how they treated other people, um, how they honored their team. Um, it's each of each and every one of those topics that I just mentioned can can go off 
uh, I can go off on for days, you know, okay. uh, but I, I learned so many things. Yeah. Um, so, okay. I'll, I'll just pick some like key points and you can speak on it. Um, so you mentioned about being planted in a church and being under a covering. Um, why is it important for people to be under a church, whether that's like online, whether it's in person, why is it important to be in a, in a physical church or under a specific ministry? Because at the end of the day, I, I mean, we have a lot of blind spots. I have a lot of blind spots and it's good to, to have people that are going to speak into my life and be like, Hey, you know, maybe we should try to do this or, or um, maybe you should take a rest. Maybe you should get some rest right now or, you know, or how's your heart? How's your family? How's your relationships? Like, where are you thriving? And I think making sure that I am as healthy as possible. Um, that's why it's important to have a, a covering. Um, there was many times where I felt, even before I even started pursuing my own artist thing, where I felt like I was so consumed with like, um, and I mean it, I don't mean it in a, in a egotistical way, but like success, like, mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you know much about the Enneagram, but I'm a three in the Enneagram, which and I'm, one. I'm here with oh. you. <laughs> Striving. So, yes, yes. Uh, the, the three is like that was my part of my personality, which is like if I'm gonna do something, I want to do it great, and it has to be the best. And and um, and a lot of times where I I would put that over. There were moments in my life where I would put that over. Um, over relationship with the Lord, it was like I would do all these things for him, but then at the same time, lose him in the process. Yeah. And yeah. I had pastors and people that would check in on me and be like, Hey, uh, don't forget why you're doing this. You know what I mean? That, that really spoke into my life. And that allowed for me to have a thriving ministry, a healthy ministry. A, 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 I feel like that's what will create longevity. Um, if you don't have a covering, you're not going to grow and you're going to eventually lose everything um because you can't carry this alone i love that um yeah because i that's something um that i've seen quite a lot on about like um kind of just it's so hard to sustain something in your own strength long term because we weren't meant to carry the weight of things alone and if we're if we feel the burden of like sustaining something in our own strength is it from god or is it from us you know because we're not right. saved by works we're saved by the grace of god and right Christ of Jesus it's that simple my dog's off again I'm sorry <laughs> oh you're good mine's over here playing with her toys so you may hear oh. a squeak or two <laughs> <laughs> um so something else that you mentioned was about um being a servant so I think um servant leadership is something that comes to mind um as you speak because so loud um <laughs> okay. um so the yeah, so servant leadership and um, some of the best leaders are actually people who serve alongside um, and they help bring people up and they they steward their flock. And um, yeah, can you just speak to people serving in ministry and um, what it taught you and how it helped prepare you to like lead a team and to lead your own kind of ministry? Yeah, um, honestly, if you want to follow the best example of what serving looks like it's jesus <laughs> like he was the best example on how to serve without needing to he didn't need to to boast about who he was um he served he led by example mm. like as a king he served um and i think in part of my process with learning what it means to serve is knowing the difference between being a servant and then also being a slave because I think a lot of times um, I did a lot of things because I thought I was served it was it was what I was supposed to do was to serve but in reality I was getting taken advantage of because uh, I just wanted to appear humble and, and whatever so I would do anything and realizing that um, it's not about putting yourself less it's about knowing your worth and even and from that place serving others um, so it, it was it was definitely a long process but whenever I, I struggle with serving or I feel like I'm having a hard time I just go back and read how Jesus served others as a king you know what I mean like it's like a president or I guess uh, here in America or a president you know going out into the streets and serving other people 
his position didn't change, his role didn't change, um, but he did it from from that place. And I think my my mistake in the beginning was, oh, I have to lower myself and I have to think of myself as nothing in order to be a servant. And think of others as higher than me or anything in order to be a true servant. And that's not that's not it at all. I I I am still a son. Mm-hmm. I'm a son who serves others and other ministries and other teams and um and uh even serving others who who at the time were doing what I wish I was doing um that was also very helpful very humbling and very great um and I feel like it's what helped me be able to do what I'm doing right now that's awesome I think that's going to help a lot and encourage a lot of people as well because um I don't think people really consider that a lot of the time but um you know like you said you were doing all of this literally for over a decade before you were like okay I'm gonna step out now um yeah so much that you learn and and there's a certain level of maturity that you have and maybe if you had it sooner you wouldn't have known how to handle it in the way that you carry it now absolutely yeah absolutely so that again goes back into like stewardship and what you mentioned before um so um how did you know that it was the right time to step out as a solo artist. Um, can you talk about kind of intentionality in God's timing and hearing God's voice? Um, I knew it was time when all the doors started opening. Um, I started getting asked to feature on a project and then and then all of a sudden another feature and then another feature. So I was just like, oh, maybe this is time. Maybe I'm supposed to be working on something. So that's, that's kind of how the Lord made it obvious to me because like I said, I was so comfortable doing what I was doing that I didn't even really think to really pursue this or mm-hmm. or really go that route until all of a sudden I'm I'm like a lot of uh influential Spanish worship teams and leaders that I looked up to were inviting me to to like go on tour and feature on their albums and I was like I didn't even I didn't even know this was something I should be pursuing or doing but let's do it you know what I mean like I that was kind of my way of the Lord showing me like, all right, it's time, you know. So what advice do you have for people who may be feeling like, okay, I think I've got a holy hunch about like stepping out, but I'm not sure it's God. How would you like, what, how would you encourage them to um, know if it's from God? I was saying to I, I, one thing that I've learned here at Bethel is that we are responsible uh um, uh, it's our responsibility to steward our prophetic words. So if somebody, if, if the Lord spoke to you and said, you're going to be a, a songwriter, um, it's going to happen. It's not going to happen just like that. Like you have to put in the work and, and it's a partnership, you know what I mean? Like, um, you have to write every day. You have to sharpen that tool, sharpen that craft. And then as you're doing that, like watch the Lord open all the doors. Um, so I think that if, if you're feeling like it's time to step into it then start, you know what I mean? If it's, if it's, uh, photography, buy a camera, if it's, you know what I mean? If it's, um, production, uh, buy some studio gear and start working on it, start learning, start watching YouTube videos. I mean, just start stewarding that call and that gift and then watch the Lord open up those doors for you so I think obedience is it if you're feeling like this is what you're supposed to be doing do it and watch the Lord come through I love that um so something else that I wanted to discuss is obviously it being a Spanish album this is a Spanish show let's talk about uh the Spanish Christian music space um yes what do you love about it um who would you like to collaborate with in the Spanish world um who do you think is killing it who do you think is one to watch let me know your opinions (laughs) yes man I feel like I remember on tour with Christine we I was in another country and I was like I don't really even know what to ask for anymore because I remember young when I was younger I would be like I want to work with this person I want to work with this person and I remember 2019 being like I don't think I've I have anyone else I want that I've that I want to work with I feel like I've worked with a lot of people but obviously there's still I still want to continue to work with all these people um but uh I am uh, my parents are Mexican so I grew up very very Latino 
uh, in a Hispanic house home where uh, my parents were first generation. So the culture and was very instilled in me. So it's something that I carry with me everywhere I go. It's something that I can't just put away. And it's it comes through in my music. I feel like I thrive more um, writing in Spanish, recording in Spanish, leading in Spanish. Spanish music has like that little more flavor that uh, that that's that I feel like uh, I don't really get when I'm leading in, in English. I mean, English is great, but it just has that extra little spice. I feel connected to my roots um, and I love doing it. Um, I got to work with um, Barak, who, who are also uh, doing great things here um, all over the Americas. Um, Miel San Marcos, I did some stuff with them through MAV. Um, and they've, I've gone on out on a couple dates with them, like here on the road. And it's, it's always fun because I feel like, honestly, I feel like my role has been to be a, a bridge between the old school. Um, and I don't mean it like one's better than the other, but just the older generation and the newer generation. I feel like I'm right in between where I am, I am introducing the the older generation with newer songs newer sounds but i'm also introducing the younger generation with traditional songs that that i sang growing up and things that i that i ended up doing so for example on my album we did we sang a couple like hymns and a couple songs that i grew up singing when i was a, a kid and the newer uh the younger generation don't really didn't grow up learning those so i feel like i'm i am a a bridge so mm -hmm. to be able to work with Miel San Marcos and Barak and and Funky and I mean all these artists that I really look up to is like I feel like it's it's my introduction it's my way of being that bridge between the younger and the older and being able to worship together. I love that so who would you like to collaborate with I always ask people this question just because I like people to put it out there in case anyone ever sees it. Yeah so you know what I just found out that, um, well, not just, uh, I, there was this, there's a secular artist. His name is, well, he was a secular artist. His name is Farruko mm -hmm. and he's like a, a rapper. Um, he just got saved like last year and he's really like going after like gospel and, and really changing his sound. I would love to work with him and like be able to collab with him. Um, I'm also in a creative space right now. So I would love to work with like artists, uh, who are that's not traditional like like uh, CCM type of worship but more so like pop sounds or whatever that are still Christian of, of course but I, I just want to explore that creative side of me there's so much in the Spanish market as well like like yes. um, Angie Rose Destiny Mark like all people I've had on my show Tommy Royale Chris Mm -hmm. you know Sam Rivera all of the people like I feel yeah. I think there's a new generation coming up in the new sound in oh the I love movie. Sam yeah he's <laughs> awesome um yeah. yeah so I just I feel like there's so much um upcoming talent and um being someone who's worked in both the English Christian market and then the Spanish Christian market um what are the differences that you see and kind of what is it about the Spanish space that you think maybe is just slightly different or just um, that, you know, you think people might, that, why should people listen to Spanish music? Like, what is it that just makes it that little bit different that they should just dip their toe in? The yeah, man. So I think that the presence is the same in, in both. I think they are, um, the Spanish side has definitely been influenced a lot by the by the English, but I'm starting to see which is what's really exciting to the English be influenced by the Spanish. So for example, there's this huge song that like was, it was, uh, I think it was by this guy named Marcos Brunet. Um, he re recorded this song that was huge in Latin America. I mean, you only, if you only sang like, it didn't matter what church you went to in Spanish, like Spanish church you went to, everybody sang the song. And Upper Room just did it in English. And it, that's not really like heard of. Um, it's mostly Spanish people translating English songs, um, but it's not the other way around. So mm -hmm. I'm realizing now that there's songs that are global that are meant to be all around. So uh, it definitely, I will say that there was a, there was a difference um, where 
the English side was very influencing a lot of the Spanish side. But right now I'm, I'm seeing like a, like a collaboration, like, like, uh, for example, even Bethel bringing me in to be a part of the team. Like, they're like, we see something in you, we, there's something special in you. How can we work together to create a new sound, to create something yeah. that, that everybody can connect to? So there's like this unity thing that I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. And even, and you could even see it in the secular side of things. Like, um, I'm sorry, let me, uh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Oh, I was getting a random call. Um, I'm even seeing on the secular side of things where I'm seeing a crossover. Like the Spanish is crossing over to the English and now English people are singing Spanish songs. So like there's definitely like this merger between like, uh, well here on, on my end, like between South and North of like Spanish sound and English sound. And it's definitely happening. I see it happening in the, in the, in the worship side as well. So I'm I'm really excited about that, and I, I feel privileged and honored that I I'm able to speak both languages, so I could enjoy both sides, and I could be a part of that merger. Yeah, and um, I can't remember who it was who I spoke to, but one of the artists I've spoken to said that learning Spanish is like a way of doubling the impact that you can have. Yeah, so I absolutely. think that's so exciting. Um, just to see like this whole space like coming together and rising up, it's awesome. Um, so. Finally, my question for you is what's next for Edward Rivera? Um, is there anything that you want to plug that you want to let us know about? Um, yes. Yeah, so I'm excited to go on the road to, to uh, go on my own tour and promote my album. I'm really excited about that. I also have uh, music um, that I'm working on right now to continue. Uh, I will do, be doing a lot. Uh, I would be doing an English record. Um or an English EP type of thing. So that's been fun just because I haven't really explored that much side of, uh, of that stuff. Of, I mean, that much of that side. Um, so I have that coming. Uh, and I just can't wait to visit other, other countries and worship with other people. Like even just talking to London, which is, was just like mind blowing. I was like, wow, I, I didn't even know that there was Spanish speaking people there or, or Latinos over there. So it's been, yeah. it's, it's really great to know, like, I, I can't wait to meet everybody and go out and worship with, with um, family. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, where can we find you on social media as well? Yeah. So on my Instagram is Ed Rivera. Um, same as my YouTube and my Facebook. So uh, you could find me in any of those.